Faced with the lack of options for safe and legal mobility, thousands of Ethiopians leave the country every year using irregular channels to reach Northern Africa, Europe, the Gulf states, and Southern Africa by crossing land and sea. Because they are trying to avoid detection and are often in the hands of smugglers, these journeys can be really risky, with the absolute worst evidence being the thousands of Ethiopian migrants who are believed to have died or have gone missing along the way, whether due to violence, vehicle accidents, shipwrecks, or a lack of access to medicine, shelter, and food. People are aware about the risks. Uh, families are aware. Sometimes uh, migrants never tell families they are migrating. That the young group is from a village that just they just team up and they just leave the village. They are aware of the risks, but they hope that they can make it. So, uh, so staying is risky for the young people because of economic, political, social reasons. Going is also risky, but at least there is hope to get something. At least fifty percent of the migrants make it, and they come back as diaspora. So they send fa families, you know, remittance. So people are aware of the risks, but without the choice of the either legal migration channels or to stay in the home, while there are a lot of attractive situations from receiving sites, so and there is success story there, so as there is high probability of young people take risk. Majority of the irregular uh, migrants are male. Uh, they are in the early 20s, uh, and most of them come uh, from the rural and uh, semi uh, urban uh, settings, and uh, they have uh, low uh, education uh, status. But when families don't hear from their loved ones, they are left to desperately search for information about whether they are okay and to find out what happened to them. In this episode, we talk to Mengistu Tedese, National Program Officer at IOM's country office in Ethiopia, about the context of how and why Ethiopians migrate from the country and how the government is now considering addressing the topic of missing migrants. I am working uh, in IOM Ethiopia, uh, Migration uh, Management Unit, uh, as a national capacity building uh, officer. Uh, and my main uh, uh, area of uh, engagement is to lie with the uh, government of Ethiopia, uh, coordination uh, uh, mechanism, uh, which we call it the National uh, Partnership Collision uh, on uh, Migration. Uh, this uh, collision is uh, responsible to oversee uh, the overall migration uh, issues in the country uh, and uh, we are working uh, with them at national uh, and uh, regional levels. Then we speak with Dr. Tekaline Mangiste, chairperson of the Department of Anthropology at Addis Ababa University and affiliated researcher at the Department of Social Anthropology at Stockholm University. Dr. Mangiste was the lead researcher in Ethiopia on IOM's recent study with families of missing migrants. He interviewed families who have missing relatives to learn what they are doing to search for them and the barriers they face in doing so. He spoke with people who work for the government and other organizations to map the current policy and legal avenues that families with missing migrant relatives in Ethiopia have. My name is Takalin Ayalio. I get into this topic uh, because uh, for the last 11 years I have been researching and publishing on migration issues generally and also human smuggling and human trafficking. Uh, we have interviewed 21 people between the ages of 25 and 66 were interviewed. Uh, we have also from this uh, participants 12 were men they were fathers, brothers of missing migrants, and nine were women, mothers, and sisters. We have also uh, conducted 10 interviews in Addis Ababa and 11 in rural areas. So we, we have conducted the research in both urban and rural areas. So, and also we have conducted, uh, they all had, you know, fathers, mothers, or brothers 
uh, husbands who were missing, contacting them, negotiating with them, discussing with them. So gradually I built rapport and, uh, you know, relations with the families. Then gradually I found out some families who are willing to really share their experiences. So I followed all these anthropological, ethnographic approaches which are useful to access these kind of research participants which are vulnerable. And what are the motivations of these mostly young men and women who left their families and take risky migration routes to other countries? Uh, there are uh, different uh, factors uh, uh, mentioned uh, as a drivers of migration in Ethiopia. Uh, I think I can categorize as uh, some structural, uh, uh, individual, uh, and uh, criminal uh, aspects. So the structural factors uh, include uh, poverty, uh, unemployment, uh, especially visible in urban centers, uh, villages, uh, and uh, there is also underemployment. There is a limited uh, opportunity for uh, regular uh, pathways. Uh, there is a huge demand in Ethiopia, uh, but the uh, availability for uh, overseas uh, employment is uh, very few. Uh, Ethiopia currently has a uh, bilateral uh, labor agreement with uh, four destination countries uh, and because of COVID, I think the movement uh, is not uh, uh, facilitated, so uh, there is uh, a limited or low uh, regular uh, options uh, for those who opt for uh, regular uh, migration. 86% of regular uh, migrants are uh, females, so the regular uh, migration uh, channels are uh, mainly uh, open for uh, female uh, domestic uh, workers, so uh, there is uh, few or no uh, regular pathways for uh, male uh, migrants, so uh, the males uh, usually uh, uh, opt for uh, regular uh, channels. We know that conflict is another driver. Since November 2020, there has been an ongoing civil war in the region of Tigray that has displaced tens of thousands of people from their homes. I am really worried about my daughter. I can't stop thinking about her and I don't know what I am going to do. My hopes and dreams left with her. Sometimes I talk to myself just like a mad woman. I have long waited to see her face, but my wishes remain a daydream. Every day I pray, hoping to get her back alive. Whenever someone knocks at the door, I run, hoping that it will be my daughter who has come back. I know she is not dead because I see her in my dreams. My heart always tells me she's alive. This is the testimony of an Ethiopian mother. For her privacy, we're using the voice of an actor and keeping her name anonymous. So how many people in Ethiopia are waiting to hear from their loved ones who left on migration journeys? There is no institution which is keeping record of how many families are missing their loved ones, so we don't have system. On the other hand, uh, most of migrants who are missing are irregular migrants uh, who are using uh, non-legal channels. So um, very difficult to uh, have a comprehensive statistics on this. But generally, from the stories, from my exposure, from my experience, I can understand that uh, many families, uh, at least, uh, for example, you know, one among four or five migrants who leave their home areas, no, normally they, not, they, they do not make their journey to all the way. So they miss along the way or they die. So thousands actually uh, of families, migrants, you know, get lost or miss along the migration routes, along the sea routes. 
uh, you can't, uh, I, I live with the stories, I never forget it. Uh, many families have, you know, suffered economical, psychosocial, uh, and also uh, searching challenges. So there are a lot of stories that I put in the, in the report. For example, I can mention one which is still going on uh, with me. I can't work in a farm because I see the face of my boy again and again. I can't even fulfill the basic needs of my family. I don't sleep at night. His voice and image come to my mind every minute. His mother had a heart attack after she heard of his disappearance. Often left without concrete answers about what happened to their loved ones, families face socioeconomic hardships and struggle with administrative and legal obstacles. There is a lot of uh, psychological, financial and legal challenges families uh, 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 of missing migrants or, or those families having a missed, uh, missing loved ones experience. Uh, for example, through the interviews, we learned not only about the grief, but also the social, legal and economic hardships, you know, uh, and the impact that having a missing family members has had over people, you know. So most families interviewed indicated that they had been unable to establish whether their misloved, uh, missing loved ones were dead or alive, leading them to, you know, experience of ambiguous loss, which occurs when there is no clear closure or sufficient reason behind what happened. So this is really, really painful. On the other hand, families also indicated that they experienced a vast range of physical, psychological, and uh, behavioral issues, ranging from an anxiety, you know, depression, hopelessness, stress, uh, sadness, and the low, uh, loneliness. It was also apparent how within the same family, women and men are impacted by having a missing migrant relative in different ways. Uh, the challenges are so complex and uh, diverse for, for women. For example, interviews indicated that the decision of when to start or stop searching for information about the missing relative often tends to be made by male relatives, fathers or you know, older sons. So women, the widows or daughters of missing migrants reported often having to challenges, uh, you know, uh, the, the decision is made by their fathers or brothers in law concerning the search. The control of any property or their ability to remarry all factors impacting uh, the short and the long term financial stability of women. I can't talk about property or inherit the land before I get proof of the death of my husband. According to the tradition, his brothers control the land. I can't go to the courts and get into a fight with his relatives. If they farm the land and give some food to my children, that is fine. I can't go against tradition and quarrel over inheritance. Land disputes are a serious problem in this village. People kill each other over land conflicts. I live with his relatives. I depend on them. Everything is difficult for me. Women were disproportionately affected financially by missing migrants because most missing Ethiopian migrants are men. Migrants often acquire significant debt in order to cover the cost of their journeys. And even in the event of someone's death or disappearance, debt is not cancelled. And many times the, the responsibility to cover financial obligation Obligations fall on the you no know, on the migrants. So migrants' wives. Uh, given the fact that women are often prevented from assuming control over property or other inherited goods, the debt imposes long-term obligations that you know limit women's ability to care for themselves, their children, uh, possibly other relatives. So. It's like a double challenge for women, you know, they lose breadwinners, loved ones, and then the cultural exclusion is all other gender inequalities also, you know, uh, aggravate the, the impact and the vulnerability of women more than men. So how do families cope with this situation? 
for example, to find out information about their missing sons, daughters, and uh, other family members, the people who interviewed mostly developed their own networks and support structures to search, actually. So, uh, for example, in both rural and urban settings where we spoke to families of missing migrants, families were not silent or, you know, passive victims. Of course, they, find, uh, they tried different strategies within their, you know, means to find information. For example, in urban areas in Addis Ababa, we noticed that there, were, there was more you know, reliance on the news of social media. Uh, so some would watch the news looking for any information related to where they thought their missing family members was or about their route or, for example, about you know, ship parks or in Mediterranean or any accidents in Italy. So uh, they are very active. Urban families are very active on the, on the media and on the, on the social media. People in the city were also more active on social media groups. So posting and searching for information. Uh, for example, the social media groups were often for the Ethiopian diaspora. So they would, you know, they could uh, spread out the news. So uh, this is for the urban families. Those in Addis Ababa also, you know, respond. I uh, reported that they tried to approach authorities more about their cases, you know, although this didn't usually go very well, you know, uh, even though they are active, urban families are active and approach the state, this never, no, no, not always work well. Uh, for example, the families who up, had approached authorities about their missing relatives generally reported quite negative experiences. In fact, they were often blamed for, you know, families were blamed for letting their lab, uh, relatives uh, migrate with the help of smugglers, which in some cases, you know, re-traumatized uh, 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 families. In other words, if you're a person in Ethiopia looking for information about a relative who left on a migration journey and who is missing, you are left on your own to search through informal sources. Particularly on the well-established southern route, from Ethiopia to South Africa, families often contact smugglers to seek information. We don't know which institution is responsible to offer information related to missing migrants. I don't know where to go or whom to ask in the government. Secondly, it is impossible to go to the country where my son went missing because I can't afford that. What I can do is to get news from the smuggler who facilitated his journey. Though I am very disappointed in the smugglers, I have never thought to accuse them also because most of them are my relatives. Also, I am scared to go to the government office because I have heard of families who sent their children through illegal ways and who were arrested and thrown into jail. In more uh, rural settings, where we, we also interviewed families, searching for information was, you know, more word of mouths, you know. Families re reported relying mainly on information shared by people who had traveled with their missing loved ones, uh, other migrants or guides or smugglers, or even bro uh, border guards. So they use these strategies, the rural families. Uh, so despite the stigma that surrounds their activities, smugglers, uh, locally known as the Lala or the Laloch, were often recognized for their willingness and ability to access, you know, contacts and information that could establish or inform the whereabouts of missing persons for the rural families in Hadia. So uh, interviews indicated how smugglers often had information concerning uh, the vehicle accidents, and they could contact uh, border guards for information concerning any migrants being detained or imprisoned while transitioning, transitioning, uh, transiting countries such as you know, in Tanzania, in Malawi, in Mozambique. While the relationship between families and smugglers are, are of course, most, must not be romanticized, uh, but interviews revealed that many families were more likely to trust smugglers over authorities when it comes to solutions or information about their missing or loved ones.
So far, there has been little government attention and action on the issues faced by families of missing migrants in Ethiopia. However, this could be changing. In September last year, IOM's recent research on families was presented to the members of the National Partnership Coalition on Migration, an interagency government body in Ethiopia. It's not uh, uh, taken as a priority for the national government, but uh, after the research and uh, after the presentation of the research to uh, uh, members of the uh, National Partnership Coalition on Migration. Uh, the, uh, the things are improving and uh, uh, one of the uh, key steps uh, was uh, integrating the missing migrants component or element into the uh, CSA, Central Statistics Authority, uh, Labor and Migration Survey. So. Uh, now uh, things are uh, improving, so but still need uh, advocacy. While the government is starting to take notice of this issue, there's still much to be done. It is first important to acknowledge the challenges faced by families with missing migrant relatives and to recognize the impacts on the country and the community of these missing migrant cases. What did the families who participated in this research say? What did they recommend would help? Uh, one, it is important, uh, most important thing is, you know, to say that any agreement, any engagement with the family members of missing migrants will require a specific approaches based on their different needs, which are, you know, connected to a wide range of intersecting uh, factors such as gender, age, disability, social status, ethnicity, and others. The second is, you know, uh, the main recommendation is that uh, any agency or institution should be designated with a mandate to coordinate and facilitate cooperation between the various government institutions and the civil society actors at the regional, national, and the local levels, you know, involved in the process of searching for or identifying and repatriating missing and deceased migrants. You know, institutions should act uh, as a single point of contact uh, for families searching for their missed, missing loved ones. Uh, families should be able to also report the disappearance of their relatives through simple and accessible procedures, which they trust to be safe and uh, confidential, regardless of you know, the legality or irregularity of their journeys, which they went missing. Uh, another issue families were mentioning was uh, this institution or government institution, which is responsible for supporting families, should actively and effectively involve and collaborate with community-based and uh, grassroots associations and uh, groups that support families of missing migrants. Uh, authorities in Ethiopia should start approaching the issue of missing migrants from, you know, a humanitarian perspective. As having a missing loved one, no matter the context, is uh, is uh, so a humanitarian tragedy. So it's the, the, the authorities should stop blaming the families. So the, it should be first and foremost, it should be a humanitarian concern for the families. Living Without Them, Stories of Families Left Behind is a podcast series produced by IOM's Data Analysis Center in Berlin. Thank you for listening.